welcome to 21st Century Cinema, the podcast about film, the film industry. I'm one of your hosts, Joseph Delavecchia, and joined with me, <laughs> as always, is my co-host, Ava Carvello. Hi, Joe. We're Hi, back. Ava. We are. It's 2020. New decade. It is. It's a new decade. It's the Roaring Twenties. Um, Hopefully, we don't have a repeat of the past 20s. Did not end well. It didn't. It really didn't. Um, but, you know, film really started to grow in the 20s. Mm-hmm. It, started, it did. It You're right. It started to become a lot bigger. Charlie Chaplin was the talk of the town. Talk I doubt of the town. Yeah, I doubt slapstick comedies making a big comeback in the next ten years. But we're supposed to get four more <laughs> avatars. So oh, hell yeah, fuck that. So uh, it's 2020. It's a new year. And as everyone knows, with new cinema decade. in 2020, the only real big thing that happens is that we get nominations for the Academy Awards. It's that time of the year where we come back to our roots, Ava, where we originally broke down last oh, year in our God. first ever episode the 91st Academy Awards, so we will continue our tradition by breaking down the, the big 90, nominations. For the 92nd the Academy 92nd Awards. The 92nd Academy Awards. So before we get into this, though, the yes. Academy has once again announced that they will not be having a host this season. I think that's kind of garbage, because how it went down last time, everyone complained about it. Yeah. But I guess seeing how the Golden Globes went with Ricky Gervais, <laughs> not that any sort of film industry or company wants that to happen to them. Well, I also feel like though if they don't want that to happen, you can just hire a comedian that you just know don't isn't have Ricky do that. Yeah, just don't hire. There's no rule saying you have to hire Ricky Gervais. I wish that was a rule, but there's no rule stating that you have to. <laughs> okay, so I think today we'll just be talking about the nominations, our opinions on it, instead of just. I will probably go on lots of tangents about slightly on topic stuff, but yeah, we'll let you know who we think is going to win. Expected mm-hmm. snubs. And um, we won't be doing all the categories. We're going to be doing cinematography. Don't uh, list them all right now. Just okay. listen, and you'll find out which ones we do. We're skipping the boring ones. Okay. <laughs> well, cinematography is the first one, so I didn't really spoil anything. All right. Cinematography. The nominations for cinematography are 1917, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, The Irishman, Joker, and The Lighthouse. Uh, full disclosure, the only movie on this list that I haven't seen is The Lighthouse, so we'll be able to talk about it that much. Okay. Uh, so starting off with 1917, have you seen 1917? Yeah. Okay, so 1917, for those that haven't... It's a continuous shot, Yeah, it's shot to look like one continuous shot. You can actually tell, though. I don't know if you noticed this, because I know you've never actually done, like, actual editing. Okay, But you can... Okay, but you can tell where Mm -hmm. the... Everything is cut, because they go into landscapes, or they go into, like, a dark shadow, and then come out of, like, around around a corner, and you can easily tell that's where they're making the It's a different production type of thing, you can tell. Exactly. But it's done very well. Smooth. It's very well done. This movie has absolutely amazing cinematography. Uh, there's a lot of attention to detail. There's this beautiful scene in the beginning when they're first starting to cross no man's land, and you can see this horse starting to die, and like half of the horse is like perfectly fine. Mm-hmm. Then the upper half of the horse is actually rotting, and you can see its skull. <laughs> there's just like these little details throughout the film, like injuries. Everything is carried over. There's such great continuity and such great care for continuity in this film. And that's something that's really difficult to achieve with cinematography. It Although is. the other films are really beautiful, you have to give it props for doing something not just different and unique, but also like knowingly very tricky and difficult Mm -hmm. to accomplish that it's a lot to take on where although you could say maybe you like the look of a one film better you do have to give props for them taking on this challenge and being Mm -hmm. pretty successful at it right so that's everything that i think um 1917 also it shoots very fine in lighting like is that your favorite to win is that who you want no No. i'm thinking it should be joker but that's okay um i just i don't I don't think there's anything special about the lighting. Like, I think 1917 definitely deserves yeah. Best Director, but it's cinematography. It's good, but it's not It's good. Best. It just gets props for... I think it got nominated just because it did the continuous shot mm-hmm. thing, and it was able because to kind of phase between the different scenes and the different feelings almost seamlessly, where it does have the entirely different cinematography throughout the scenes without it feeling, like, disjuncted or, like, separated. Mm-hmm. But, you know, like, the in-between ground of feeling separated, but also connected and the uh the plot is a little sa- uh not very good in this movie it's very well, dry it's about cinematography let's okay. not talk about the plot quite yet okay um so the other ones we won't go through each one of them you said you haven't seen the lighthouse right me neither but i've seen clips of it and scenes yeah it's in black and white which is interesting yeah which is interesting and again i think it's something that they probably put in the, this category because they went kind of a bit of a riskier path now like black and white movies still exist but there's 
you're kind of cutting off a whole element that you can use. The last movie that so. I saw in black and white, like current, was Oz the Great and Powerful with James Franco, and that was. Just it was only dreadful. part of it was in black yeah, and white. Yeah, only part of it. Just to be like the Wizard of Oz. Yeah. Let's not talk about that movie. It's still dreadful. So I've only seen like it's a, it is a beautiful movie, and they were able to make it beautiful without the use of color. I'm gonna say that's kind of why it was nominated. I'm gonna say there's probably not a chance it'll win. No. I don't think so. No. And then, honestly, the la- the other three, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, uh, the Irishman, I don't and think Joker. there's anything special about Once Upon a Time or Irishman. I was going to say, I don't feel anything with the Irishman. Once Upon a Time in Hollywood just has that Quentin Tarantino flair to it where mm-hmm. it's like you're watching. It's good that it's like you're watching an old movie, the way it's set up, with also having that, like, I don't know, like that, that spice that Tarantino movies have. That it's like a good mix of the two. But Joker is my favorite to win, too. I, I thought it's so good. Mm-hmm. It's so beautiful. I love it. If that's who you want to win, too. Are you yeah. expecting Joker to take it? I'm hoping. Joker has the most nominations, so I'm really expecting it to yeah. clean house. The reason why I love Joker, though, is because it's just so beautifully shot. Like, the lighting is powerful. There's just so many great attentions to detail. Once again, the camera work, just, the camera movements. It's just it's every so Every aspect well of the movie works well together. Yeah, the sound, the acting, the writing. It's so great. Uh, yeah, it's my favorite movie of the year. It's a, almost a perfect movie. Honestly, it's I'd say... fantastic. I'd say I agree, honestly. Yeah. Yeah. Joker's probably my favorite. Absolutely fantastic. Uh, do you want to talk about costume design, actually? Uh, if you so, want to, I don't have much to say about it. Really? But the nominees are Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, Little Women, The Irishman, Jojo Rabbit, and Joker. Really? You don't have anything to say about any of those? Little Women was very time period accurate, I know, from working at a historic site. And Jojo Rabbit, it was really well done. Also time period accurate. Yeah, time Once Upon a Time accurate. in Hollywood, also time period accurate. I think with costume design, for almost all of these, and Joker is also in this category, I'd say that's the only exception, where the rest of them are time period accurate that costume design is always kind of put in there because it's time period accurate they did all their research they write that's why i think joker is my favorite to win in this one as well because they didn't just get nominated for being time period accurate they got nominated because the designs of the costumes of the characters it displays as much about the characters as like the dialogue does and the acting actually wait I do like that, but I'm going to go back on what I just said. I'm going to say Once Upon a Time is my favorite. Because Once Upon a Time has really great It costumes. does that, and it also has the perfect, like, mm-hmm. 60s style. And it's, you know, I, I love that style of fashion. And it's very accurate. It displays a lot about the characters. And it's, like, you know, and just well put together, right? Leo has a different cowboy costume every 10 minutes. So, yeah, you know, that's, you pretty, that's pretty nice. To that. um, moving along now, we have the nominations for animated feature film. I know no. you have quite an opinion on this, I on do. something that you say is a controversy. I disagree. Let's it's leave leave that leave that for now. So uh, nominated are, is uh, How to Train Your Dragon, The Hidden World, I Lost My Body, Claws, Missing Link, and Toy Story 4. Before you go off. No, on I wanted to say okay. who I think should okay, win this sure. category. Go ahead. Klaus should win this category. Oh my gosh. I know we did an episode complaining about Christmas movies right before the break. And then after that, I watched this Christmas movie. It became one of my favorite movies of the year. Yeah. One of my favorite Christmas movies ever. It's so beautifully well done, beautifully animated, a great story, so heartwarming. I love it so much. And this movie (laughs) is the best movie on this list. So I only watched like the last half of Claws because, um, you know, other people were watching it and I kind of came late and I was like, okay, let's, the last part I saw was pretty enjoyable, but it's not enough for me to go back and watch the beginning part. I'm sorry about that. But it's a happy cry. Um, but it did seem special. Whereas you look at How to Train Your Dragon, Toy Story 4, like, they're good. But you do also feel like they're, like, you know what I mean, in genuine sequels mm-hmm. that maybe they did end up good, but I essentially think How to Train the, Your Dragon was a good, like, for its trilogy. I don't know why Toy a Story good way 4 to happened. It. Yeah, Toy Story 3 was complete. It was yeah, satisfying. We didn't, we didn't need another one. I mean, it was good, but we didn't need it. The intention behind those two is kind of I have to ask money though, grabs, so. Nobody saw The Missing Link. Nobody cared about it. Nobody. I I saw well, how did it win the Golden Globe, and how was it nominated? It was, like, I don't know what it was. The algorithm on YouTube in theaters. That movie was, like, shoved down my throat. I've probably seen the trailer about 20 times, and I never thought about seeing it, it in theaters. It doesn't look interesting at all. I didn't see it, it either. I just, cheesy it baffles and overdone. me. Maybe it was good. Maybe it was really good, and you know what? 
neither of us watched it watch it win and we're just like what the if it wins the the oscar i'll probably watch it so i can understand because there is a controversy for this category if if, if it wins the oscar i'm just gonna hate it more i'll be so salty that this dumb yeah but i feel like i have to watch it so i can hate it more all right we'll get to this controversy that i I mean if you guys have listened to previous episodes i'm willing to bet you can guess what joe is about to go off about frozen 2 was not nominated guys frozen 2 has become the highest grossing animated film of all time it's not about money it's about artistry it is an absolutely beautiful sequel with fantastic music great performances an amazing story (laughs) katie's over here giving great life lessons yeah katie stop i'm blocking you out i katie you absolutely loved the little fire (laughs) gecko when we watched it okay you loved him okay it's a family movie it's it's, it's an amazing movie a fantastic sequel nope. it deserves a third one, one was it was the good. best animated film nope. of the year okay nope. it is one above clouds in my list i no it's above frozen clouds. frozen 2 wow. should have nope. been nominated and it should win the oscar and the entire time like coming up for Oscar nominations i was like yeah frozen 2 is gonna be nominated for animated film and it's gonna win i was so confident <laughs> in that and then it came mm. out and it wasn't nominated and i was like so how how this is coming from the same guy who disses Upset. on every single movie marketed to children or as Moana family movies. Moana is overrated. Moana is way better than Frozen and no, I and not. probably 20 times better than Frozen 2 because I haven't seen Frozen 2 and I'm not going to just to spite it. really you. Good. I guarantee I haven't seen it, but I guarantee it does not deserve to hold ranks with these movies. It should be if you are list. a Frozen 2 fan as well, DM us and let us know so Joe doesn't feel so alone on this because I think he is. It's on CNN's it's not... list of Oscar snubs, okay? It's a snub. It's a snub. Okay, Joe, it's a children's movie. Let's move on. <laughs> original song. Um, okay. Original song. There's also a controversy this, which we're going to get to. So nominated is I'm Standing With You from Breakthrough, Into the Unknown from Frozen 2, well-deserved, Stand Up from Harriet, I'm Gonna Love Me Again from Rocket Man, and I Can't Let You Throw Yourself Away. The two strongest competitors in this category, I believe, are Into the Unknown and I'm Gonna Love Me Again. I I actually agree with that. I fully agree with that. Because even if you don't like Frozen 2, I... I believe, do like that song. Yeah, that is a very good song. The Panic at the Disco version is fa- absolutely fantastic. Of course, that's what you say. And I'm Gonna Love Me Again was written for Rocket Man. I love Man. that song. It's performed very beautifully by Taron in the film. It's it's, great. it's fantastic. I love Rocket Man. It's so whimsical. It and is. Like, it's, a fr- it's a really good movie. It's so fun. Better than the other unnamed biopic about a music star that we were mentioning this time last year that i was very salty about you can Mm -hmm. go back and listen know what i'm talking about but i like rocket man we don't have to go back (sighs) we don't have to go back to to the beginning of 21st century cinema when we did not know what we were doing do we now kind of i feel like more so okay like after a year we've gained (laughs) some experience i think my favorite to win and it's just because i'm biased because i love the movie itself so much but i think the song's great too is i'm gonna love me again from rocket man that's I would go into I'm the unknown, but I would definitely have that as ba- as a but I'm ex- backup. I'm kind of expecting to the unknown to win from Frozen. Now, Ava, kind do you know of. what the controversy is with this that Twitter lost? You know, over? I actually don't. I don't know. Um, Beyonce's song from The Lion King was not nominated. <laughs> Honestly, it wasn't good. That's song? why people. <laughs> what song? Do you know what it's called? Uh, Beyonce's song from The Lion King. Wait one second. I have it written okay, down well, right ma- here. Maybe. It- you could look at it one way that maybe it was a good song. I can't think about what it sound, which one it is. I'll probably recognize it when I see the title. But maybe it's just because the movie got just like absolutely like shit on. Like you know what I mean? Everyone was so angry about it that if they were to nominate it in any sort of category, people might go a bit ape shit and be like, "Oh, you know what? Like they're just going for a rip here. They're like bringing up this." You know what I mean? Like people would just be angry that the movie got n- mm-hmm. mentioned at the Academy Awards. It's called Spirit, by the way. Spirit. It's called Spirit. Oh, you know what? I do know that song. It's okay. It's didn't need it's to be a nominated. good song, but all the original songs are always like, I don't know. They always have like the same type of format and sound to it. They're very eh, cheesy and overdone and dramatic and emotional. That one's a bit more mellow. It doesn't. Yeah, like none of the songs in that really movie had heart. The other ones. Yeah, it doesn't. Okay, well, we're like, not going to ham on so that one. Into the powerful, and so is, <laughs> so is I'm going to love me again. Yeah, it's Ugh, really powerful. Such, such great, great jobs. That's, that's all I can say. Um, I'm, I'm really salty, but I'm just I'm gonna be honest with you. So salty, about Frozen uh, too. We huh? now have our uh, actress in a supporting role. Okay. Actress I in have, a supporting role. Do you have a favorite to win this one? I do have a favorite. I to feel win this very one. strongly about one of these. Ones. Do you? Yes. Look okay. So actress in a supporting role. Okay. Kathy Bates for Richard Jewell. Laura Dern for Marriage Story. Scarlett Johansson from Jojo Rabbit. Florence Hugh from Little Women, and Margot Robbie from Bombshell. 
Um, yeah, so my favorite is Scarlett Johansson saying that right of that from Jojo For, Rabbit. Before we get into this, sure. I just want to give Scarlett applause. She is nominated in both actress in a supporting role and lead and actress, actress in a leading role. For a marriage story. She was also in the number one grossing movie of the year and slash of all time. Endgame. And she has gotten her own solo film that is going to kick ass at the box office. It is, and people are going to love it. And, and the trailers to be are good. fantastic. Like, so psyched Scarlett for Scarlett has had she's a great. year. And she's great. I used to actually not be a big fan of her. I think I've actually mentioned her in a previous episode, and I was saying that I didn't really. But, like, this year has just changed the way I look at her, that I respect her as, like, an actress, and she's just very She didn't have a bad role. Lovable. She had she, she, she had the best roles. She like, oh, she's... And all of her characters were lovable characters. She didn't play, like, nasty people, which is, like, extra points. But, oh, in Jojo Rabbit. If you guys haven't seen this movie, please go see it. I've been talking about Taika Waititi since we first started. It's true. I love Taika Waititi, and I'm so happy that one of his movies is finally getting the recognition it deserves. This is his, um... Hopefully I don't mess up. Fourth, or possibly fifth? A uh, fourth solo movie that he's directed, right? Because mm-hmm. he did Into the Shadows, but that was with Jermaine Clement. So this is his fourth movie. And it's it's so good. I'm so glad he's getting this recognition. And everyone else is recognizing how freaking good it is that it played worldwide. It wasn't just in New Zealand and niche theaters around the globe. It was here. It was in every every cinema in Canada. Like, oh, I'm so, I'm so proud of him. And it was so good. Scarlett Johansson did so great. I think I cried like three times in this movie because of her. Oh, amazing. Fun fact. So I good. Follow, I follow Taika on Twitter. He's just, fun. Just for Ava. Oh, he's such a fun Mainly guy. Mainly because I, love his Twitter. I know you're you're not on Twitter, or if you are, you're not, not on Twitter regularly as, your, as yourself. So I, <laughs> a, it's so a, I always have something to talk to Ava about, and when we're talking about 21st century cinema stuff, I can just be like, look what Taika did. It's absolutely he's a, amazing. He's, he's a fun guy. He's a funny Twitter. guy. He's I love great. tweeting I love about him. he was tweeting about Baby Yoda a few weeks ago. Of course ago. he was. And he was just and it's just like the reveal, like he has a real name that you're gonna find out, and he's like, I bet it's Norbert. <laughs> It's funny, just as that New guy. Zealand humor. Oh, it's so great. Um, now, my do you disagree for... with me for Scarlett Johansson? I do, but I'm going to oh explain why. I'm sure, go ahead. Why. Go ahead. Um, for I, I loved her in Jojo Rabbit. I absolutely mm-hmm. love Jojo Rabbit. It's my second favorite film of this year. I wish I could put it as number one. Is number one Little Women? Has, oh no, Joker. no, Joker just has that edge over it, and that's my only thing. Just, that's fair. Jojo Rabbit was also once again a perfect movie that it I loved. Was a great movie. But I'm picking Kathy Bates for Richard Jewell. Um, as we all know, oh, okay. Kathy Bates, she's a fantastic actress, I crushes everything Jewel. she's in. Richard Jewell is not that great of a movie. It's an okay, okay. movie. However, Kathy Bates fucking I love her. crushes. She left me she's speechless great. in her role. I did not know how to like describe her role. She was the only actress that made me actually feel, kept me involved in the story, and actually made me like want to cry. Like She mm. is so fantastic. She sells this role beyond belief that she is this guy's mother, and she's just suffering and just wants everyone to be happy because her son did a good thing she's I, you know i haven't even i haven't heard of this movie prior to seeing the nominations i'm being honest mm-hmm. i might go watch it just for her and you're yeah. saying she was great in it because she's the best part she's love so her. good she's like one of my favorite actresses Gosh. of all time yeah no oh she just and she always has great roles she mm-hmm. always has like the best roles i think it's because she's just able to sh- show literally every emotion possible like she just has such an expressive face and she's just there's this one oh, scene where just like, I haven't seen it. and I hope it's when they show mm-hmm. the Oscar when they like show the nominations. Yeah. It's where she like all the stress just gets to her and she like storms off into the washroom and she's just crying and she's screaming mm. at her son across the door. It's Scary just this, cool it's this scene, yeah. very power. It's very powerful. Like she does such a great job and then she like comes out in tears. Either that or when she gives she gives a speech to the press at the end. That's just yeah raw, absolutely yeah. raw, she fantastic was performance. So great. She I, just keep going. After seeing this, I was like, just give her the award. No, she's you know, what? fantastic. I'm looking at the um, nominees, and there's... Wait, who do you expect to win? Do you expect Kathy Bates? I expect Laura Dern. To I was going to say, story. I don't expect her. Really? Everyone I don't like her being her nominated. I didn't like she's her She's also, however, the front runner of predictions. Like, she's the one... She's the expected. Yeah. Movie. I don't think she's going to win. Marriage Story, I like... I love that movie. Her portrayal was interesting, but... It, honestly, it was kind of a flat character. You know what I mean? Like... There's not much to her except for what you're kind of being told that there wasn't anything more for her written in the script and Laura Dern. Maybe it's because she was limited by the script, but she also didn't do anything more for the character. If you've seen the movie, you know what I'm talking about. Do you know what I mean? Mm Mm-hmm. Have you seen, you haven't seen it? I haven't seen, you haven't seen movie, Marriage I know, Story. Ah. I know what you mean by Laura Dern because I'm not. She's big not. On Laura Dern. I don't. Maybe it's, I'm biased because I, 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 I don't like her. Actress, actress. I don't, I don't, I don't, don't. like. She's um. She portrays kind of like a feminist type lawyer, right? Um. I'm not crazy about her. I'm honestly surprised to see her nominated and to hear she's a front runner. 
I don't know. If she wins, I'll be genuinely shocked and a l- little Honest, bit upset, honestly. Honestly, beside her, any of these other women, I'd be very happy with yeah. them winning. They all Robbie, gave fantastic performances in their Robbie. roles in each yeah. one of these movies. Margot Robbie is drop-dead fantastic and bombshell. She always is. Florence Hugh. I wasn't that big on Florence Hugh. This movie has sold me on Florence Hugh and has made me excited that she is in Black Widow. She is yeah. fantastic in this movie. She's great as Amy in Little yeah. Women. Uh, absolutely loved it. Scarlet, as we mentioned, great. Honestly, if it's not Laura, I'll be happy. I'll be happy. <laughs> Same. Watch it be Laura. And I'll it's be- probably <gasps> going to be Laura. Laura, oh, darn. Oh. <laughs> moving on now, we're moving on to actor in a supporting role. So, first up nominated is Tom Hanks for A Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood. Then we have Anthony Hopkins from The Two Popes. Al Pacino, The Irishman. Joe Pesci, <laughs> Pesci, The Irishman. And Brad Pitt for Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. A note, Brad Pitt did take home the Golden Globe for Once Upon a Time in Hollywood in this category. Let me tell you, his portrayal, that in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, he's great. It's, he is. It's so good. It's so entertaining. It's it's comical, but also serious. And that scene at the end. Oh, not he's to say so it. great. It's so good. That's like my favorite movie scene of 2019. Or the That's and, it. The I him love and Jackie that Chan scene. scene. Or not Jackie Chan. Um, uh, Bruce Lee. Bruce Lee, thank you. My gosh. <laughs> Jackie Chan, what? Yeah. Oh, okay. Jackie yeah. Chan is actually 100 years old. Um, A lot of people think that the winner is going to be Brad Pitt or Joe Pesci. But mm, I personally I Joe think, Pesci, yeah. I think Al Pacino. I think they'll just give it to him because it's Al Pacino. <laughs> Al Pacino only has one Academy Award. How, exactly. And how many and names in Hollywood carry as much weight as exactly. Al Pacino? He doesn't have anything for The Godfather. Which is criminal. <laughs> Travesty. But he's he's my favorite part of The Irishman. He's the part that I love the absolute he's most. He's pretty great. He drew me in. He was so fantastic as Jimmy Hoffa. I he's, loved Al Pacino. He can I, be like really subtle but also really out there. Yeah. He's a he's fantastic actor. He's so good. He deserves another Academy Award, and he deserves it for this role, because he's the best part of a Martin Scorsese movie. Mm-hmm. Ah, that's a lot. What do you think about uh, Tom Hanks? Did you see A Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood? I did see A Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood. What'd you think? Um, I thought it was okay. You go into this movie expecting it to be a Mr. Rogers movie, but it's, it's not. not. It's, it's more about, about the journalist, the, yeah. which I was okay with, which fine. That's I the like movie, that. So it's I'm a better watch take instead of just seeing the biopics that are always kind of generated mm-hmm. the same type of way. It's, yeah. it's more so, original. But still, the movie itself as an overall is it's just okay. It, no, you know what? It's good. It's a good movie. I won't say it's just it's it's good. It's good, but I think movie. amongst the ranks of the other Oscar movies, it's, it's okay. Yeah, I wouldn't it, say it's, okay it's compared to the any of them. Honestly. But this year was such a great year for film, guys. It, it was. was it last was year was be- great, too. In last, year was, last year was okay. 2018 was amazing. 2019 is way better. 2019 tops it for me. Really? Over 2018? Yeah. Really? Tw- I think 2019 Oh, wait, no. I'm thinking, 20- wait. Yeah. 20, I'm thinking about 20s. Wait. I'm so messed up because now it's 2020, but we're talking yeah. about 2019. I mean to say 2017. 2017 was a good year. That was a good was year. A good, that had three billboards. Three billboards is one of my favorite three, movies. Three billboards is really good. Oh, that's such um, a good movie. 2016... I did oh, not. 2016, I'm so torn on. 2016 had some great movies like La La Land or oh, Moonlight. Gosh, you either like I one love of those. Moonlight. Okay, yeah, I like one of those. La La so, Land right, is okay. you had that. And then you had movies like Warcraft and Now You See Me Too. Like, you had those. <laughs> Just kind of like bottom of the barrel. Yeah, it was, it was an emotion. 2016 was an emotional ride well, for me. You know what? That was four years ago. Yeah. We're here. Tom Hanks, Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood. Honestly, this movie, I think it, um, it would have meant more. If uh, Won't You Be My Neighbor didn't come out last year. You know what I mean? Because they had the Mr. Rogers documentary come out right after. Because a lot of people wanted, were expecting to see so much of him. And you, you don't see that much. Like, he's yeah. in a decent amount, but not... That we already got think enough. are, like... Not that you have, like, a quota for amount of Mr. Rogers you can consume, whatever. But he's, like, a bit of an American icon. And for there to be two huge production, like, big... Uh, what's the word? Big budget productions mm-hmm. year after year for him, like... You know, it's not going to hit it off as well when you see, oh, they're just making more, more Mr. Rogers films. Look at the USA, more Mr. Rogers. Because it's not really a thing here. And I'm certain it's not a thing in the UK or Europe or Australia or anywhere else, right? So it's really only American exclusive. And I'm just having the, um, won't you be my neighbor come up before? It's kind of like soften the blow versus just Mr. Rogers kind of being introduced to the world again with mm-hmm. it, you know? You feel what I'm saying? So I think it, it, it is underappreciated for that fact, but. In terms of, like, who went to watch it and the praise it received, but an actor in a supporting role. I love Tom Hanks, but I think he's uh, overpowered here. If he wins, I'll be happy for him, but I'll be surprised. Mm -hmm. I will be very surprised, too. A lot of people were shocked that Timothy Chalamet 
was not uh, nominated, but I think that's for okay. uh, Little Women. For Little Women, which he is fantastic and he plays he great is. Laurie, but <laughs> actor in a supporting. Oh, so... I just feel like this category is so stacked it's and so filled with strong. such great performances. Like not nobody yeah. in this category and is now, bad. We haven't talked about Anthony Hopkins from the Two Popes. Did you watch Two Popes? Clips. I haven't seen the. Movie. I've seen clips. I haven't seen the movie yeah. either. But he's, I've, what I've seen, he's, like, he's great. He's great. He's, he's Anthony great. Hopkins. Um, it's, what I'm saying again, it's comical and entertaining, but not too over the top. It's not hard to take serious, but it's... So oh, I can't talk good. too much about the two popes, but still knowing him, Anthony Hopkins, as an actor, this category is stacked. And that's why I think Chalamet didn't so get hard. a nomination. It's Sorry, just because, Timmy. Mm. Yeah, he just, he, he can't compete against these yeah. gentlemen right now. Okay. All right, moving on now, we're going to go on to Best Director. Yeah, okay, sure. All right, Best Director. Now, director is always an interesting category every year. Mm -hmm. Uh, So nominated is, of course, Martin Scorsese for The Irishman. Quentin Tarantino, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Bing Joon-ho for Parasite. Glad you said that name. Uh, Sam Mendes for 1917. And Todd Phillips for Joker. Is your favorite Joker? My favorite is Joker uh, as a movie, but for director, I would like it to be Quentin Tarantino for Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Yeah, I think... I yeah. think I agree. I there's, agree. There's no it's, contest. It's, it's fucking Quentin Tarantino. Tarantino. Let me tell you, every single you you go to an art school, you know film students. Am I wrong in saying that every single film student wants to be the next Tarantino or wants to be Tarantino? There's right? a page Everyone. for my school called Sheridan Confessions, and there's was like somebody commented about like be like hating the film students because they all want to like be yeah, Quentin and Tarantino. that was their thing. They're like you all expect to be the next Quentin Tarantino. Everyone the next wants morning. to be him, and you know what? It's fucking justified. If I was going to be a director, I wouldn't want to be one unless I'd be known like Twin Tarantino. You know what I mean? Just that name holds such power, such flair. You know such... you said Twentin Tarantino. I'm, so, uh, I'm sorry, Quentin Tarantino. I was I always do that. Just be quiet. Leave me alone. Twentin it's, Tarantino. <laughs> Twentin Twinton Carantino. Yes. But then again, you have Martin Scorsese in the same category, and he's also one of those names that you hear it. Some people who have, are not movie people, maybe have never even seen any of his movies, know the name. Like, he yeah. is known. These are two of, like, the biggest directors, not just, like, this year, but of the past, like, 20 years. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to be honest, there's nothing... The past 30 years, it's been these two guys have been frontrunners. There's nothing special about okay. Martin Scorsese's directing of The Irishman. There's not. I was going to say that, and that's not. underwhelming. Yeah. Where if you watch, say, like, The Aviator, that's my favorite film by him, I'd say. Or or Departed. Uh, one of those Departed. two that are amazing. I love The Departed, but I think his directing in The Aviator is fantastic. Mm-hmm. In The Irishman, it feels kind of generic, but I think that's because his style has become one of the easiest to emulate. So, so many other directors have kind of copied him that we have seen it so much that it is, it's it's his style. He originated it, but now it's just been a little bit overdone to no mm-hmm. fault of his own, but that's why it just feels like, it feels okay. It doesn't feel like anything special because all movies are a little bit similar, you know, use the same kind of tricks he uses, whereas Quentin Tarantino is always stealing shit from all these other little niche t- directing styles, takes them Ma- mix matches them together in the best way possible puts kick-ass music on top oh it's so good and this movie unlike his other movies i would say is more of a slow burn mm-hmm. but then when you get to the end that last scene so satisfying and even though it's, it's a so slow good. burn i still think it tells a really great story. it's a slow burn but it still yeah. has those very mm-hmm. lucid and like dreamlike elements to it and it's a great story i think it's subtle but it's also really in your face oh i think the reason why people it's didn't like Tarantino. this movie so much is because they were expecting this big manson murder movie when it, it isn't it isn't that's it isn't. <laughs> and yeah i was very okay with that listen charles manson is in it but is he the main focus of the story no not at all is it about some aging hollywood actor doing cowboy movies <laughs> that's what it's about yeah. there's no real storyline there it's about subtlety but then there's all this action going mm-hmm. on in the background it's Oh, it's so good. It's good. I believe that 1917 is going to win it, though, because uh, it is shot perhaps. to look like when continuous shot. It did take a lot it's of time and effort, and honestly, harder my, to direct. my hat does go off to Sam Mendes. He achieved something amazingly brilliant here. He should be awarded for it, I do believe. I think Just because I would personally like to see Tarantino get it, Sam Mendes, I do believe, deserves, deserves it. it. I deserves think it. 1917 was a lot more work than Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. I, I definitely was. I bet your Once Upon a Time in Hollywood was a lot of fucking fun for Quentin Tarantino. Mm-hmm. But I guarantee you, 1917, for Sam Mendes and everyone involved, was a nightmare. Did you actually hear Tarantino announced to IGN just the other day? What? He's making a four-part Bounty Law miniseries. No, I didn't. Yeah, he's making I Bounty Law. I didn't. I'm Law. always behind on this stuff. He's huh? making Bounty Law, which is the TV show that yeah. Leo stars in as a cowboy. And That's so cool. 
yeah nice that's good really good awesome. advertising by him that's mm-hmm. good marketing yeah, i'll watch it and he's uh, teasing that the full four-hour cut of once upon a time in hollywood will, will be released next year Ooh, i know mm, gonna watch it mm-hmm. so i would love to see tarantino win but it's just i i would say sam mendes does yeah great because yeah, the only really the only really the good thing about that, the movie logistics about that movie is the directing the plot is dry and the dialogue's just like oh my god the dialogue <laughs> is so it's so bad weird. except it's so dry except for when rigid. um uh, it's got the big guest actors like i think the best scene in the movie is the two minutes benedict cumberbatch is in <laughs> at the end he's great and uh richard madden richard madden uh, richard madden his, like, I his, love his scenes him. at the very his, his oh, like richard one minute scene at the very great. end he's in rock. Yeah. Oh. they are the only just only, only when they brought yeah. in the so, big name actors for that little bit of selling point is when it actually yeah. had that like oh those are real people besides that it's they feel like characters you know the, like, actually my favorite one is do you know i don't remember his name but the guy who plays moriarty on sherlock andrew scott Thank you. He is. I think that's his name. He has a scene in it he's where great. I love he has too. to walk them like to no man's land, and he's just like this drunk, angry military guy yeah. who's just like, "Ugh, this war is bullshit." And he ends up giving them a flare gun before they leave, and he's like, "If you make it across, signal us, and we'll come for you at nightfall." And he's like, and "You know what?" He's like, "I lose a lot of those, so if you do <laughs> die or if you do make it, can you just throw it back to us?" You know, he's so great. I think he should get more roles in big he Hollywood. Should. He's, he's great fantastic. in Sherlock. He did Hamlet. This is kind of, I don't know how many people have seen his live rendition of Hamlet, but there's tons of clips on YouTube, and it is breathtaking, and that's a lot for a Shakespeare play, and I'm not a Shakespeare fan, but it's so good. He's he's great. I wish he would get more big Hollywood roles, that we would see him star in one of these Oscar movies. I would lose my mind if that happened. But, Yeah. Okay, uh, so yeah, nothing really to say about Joker. I mean, Joker's directing is good. I haven't I seen think Parasite the, because I it's, either. It, it's an international film, which is nominated actually for a lot. I actually just it's, heard about this film last week for the first time. It's honestly a pretty big deal for an international uh, film to mm-hmm. get nominated for especially, Best Director. So that's an accomplishment after in Roma itself. Last year, this is two years in a row now that the Academy is. Yeah. Like, Did you see noticing. Roma? I, no, I still haven't. Oh, it was good. Oh, right, because you said earlier the last black and white film you saw, saw was <laughs> the Oz awesome movie. <laughs> Whereas it was Roma for most of us normal people. Yeah, but Parasite actually looks good. It's about a uh, family. It's kind of like your classic Romeo and Juliet. You know, families don't mm-hmm. know they're going to get married. But apparently there's a big twist in there that kind of changes and devastates is. everything in it. And people I'm are interested in it, but it is something, yeah, like I haven't heard of because it's an international film. Yeah. So it's not advertised to us. And it's only really shown if you pay attention to awards and film festivals. Mm-hmm. So, but it's it's a huge deal for them to be direct uh, to be nominated for Best Director. One is an international film. Like, that's huge. So just props them for getting into that category. It's an accomplishment in itself. Okay, um, next up is actress in a leading role. Our nominees are Cynthia Erivo, Harriet. Scarlett Johansson in Marriage Story. Saoirse Ronan, Little Women. Uh, Renee Zellweger in Judy. Charlize Theron, Bombshell. All right, I have a problem with one of these. What's? And the problem is just that I really hate her. <laughs> Renee Zellweger. Oh Zellweger. yeah, I feel that. I can't stand her. However, her movie's about Judy Garland. It's about Judy Garland, yeah. so it's a special place in my heart. Have you seen it? I haven't. It's okay. It's one of those other ones that it's. It would be a really good movie, but in like the ranks of these movies, it's just okay, mm-hmm. and it does have a special place in my heart because I love Judy Garland. But uh, uh, Renee, I, her, her face, I can't stand because she's got so much like bad Botox. Her facial expressions are all stunted. That I think it does affect her as an actress. She's really good at being, like, distressed, you know? She always looks distressed. <laughs> so this role was good for her because she's distressed a lot. But I just have a problem with her being no- nominated because it wasn't great, her her portrayal. It wasn't. She won was the Globe nuts. and is the expected winner of, of, this, category. of this category. And that confuses me because I, I just must have missed it mm-hmm. because it, she didn't seem that great to me. Maybe it's because it could also I, be because you have a bias. Because I hate her. That's what I was like, about to say. Because I just don't. I don't like her. Love and adore Amy Adams. I've only seen Amy Adams in two roles that I. She was great her. in Vice. It's Vice. Fantastic. Vice advice. and Arrival are the only two roles I have yeah, ever liked Amy Adams in. I'm impartial to Amy Adams, but I guess she's the standout. She's the reason why the movie did well. Like I'm not gonna be like she's a terrible actress, but she just isn't anything special i love her in chicago though i think that's fantastic portrayal but again it's just 
she annoys me so i'm biased so i just don't like she's nominated here i don't like she's the front runner run, runner i don't like that she's expected to win if she wins i'm just gonna sit there and be shaking my head and i'll be like <laughs> that that'll be my exact reaction just, do you have ugh. a favorite to win for this category um I, I don't. If I had to pick one, I'd say Sir Ronan. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I love Thank her, you. though. She's so, like, personable. It's, it's time she's for she's a great a, actress. I love her. It's time for a Joe rant, but this is a positive one. Oh, my okay. God. Let's go. Okay. Sir Ronan, I absolutely time. adore her. She is a fantastic actress. This is her fourth Oscar nomination. She has she's been so robbed. Young. I understand she's been up against some pretty steep competition, but this category right here, no, she should be the front runner. She should. She gives the performance of her life and Little Woman. She is all in it. So much heart in it. It's so powerful she's so amazing she's just been robbed so many times and it's about time she's one of the greatest actors of the current generation her and adam driver two of my favorite actors currently at this time i just i believe sir sharonin needs to be properly recognized for what she's done i would just absolutely love for her to get her award she really really deserves it can we just stop like stop making people leonardo dicaprio give them the oscar they deserve and she deserves it in this category she outdoes all these women this year like i said scarlet was great she had a great year charlize was fantastic and bombshell loved bombshell but saoirse was just she's just the best and she's, she's great she did I think she's... such a great job in this film she's so underrated and i really think she I deserves i would say she's underrated she's probably rated mm-hmm. she's but, well known but she's a great actress i also I feel like she it. did not get enough recognition for ladybird I think she, she got a lot of rec, uh, recognition. For not her, enough. Not, not enough. It's not never enough. enough for her. She is really great. I love her portrayal. I think there's a little bit of... I'm not going to call it typecasting because it's the same director. So it is kind of a similar role to Lady Bird where it's like kind of rebellious, headstrong young woman, right? Mm-hmm. But she does a great job as it. Like, sure, maybe she's being typecast. Maybe that'll affect her in the future now that she's been in two huge movies playing kind of similar characters. But she does a great job. Like, she... She's, she's just, I believe that she is that person. Like, mm-hmm. I I would say, yeah, probably her to win. And then Scarlett Johansson nominated for this one. I, I watched Marriage Story. I liked it. It wasn't, it didn't hit me that hard. Is There's good parts of the movie, but I would, I would be genuinely surprised if she did win in this one as well. Because mm-hmm. her betrayal, her, uh, her character is a bit more standard. And there's not much more she does with it versus, like, she's pretty expressive and with the words. But it's not as... There's not as much she adds to it as she does, say, in her role in Jojo Rabbit, where it's phenomenal. If you haven't seen Jojo Rabbit, go see it. Yeah, honestly, one of the best films of this year. Sorry if that was loud. It was so good. Yeah, you're not wearing the headphones. That was loud. I'm sorry. Um, I think that's it. We both agree, Sir Sharonin. Mm-hmm. What you, I do want to add on, yeah. though, about the whole Little Women thing is that for Best Director, I would honestly take Martin Scorsese out for The Irishman and put yes. Greta Gerwig in there. I was going to say. Oh, my um, God. She was robbed. She, Greta think, should have been great. nominated. She's and an she amazing director. she has a style that's unique. And there's mm-hmm. something about directors that have a style. You know, Scorsese used to, like I said, now that's become kind of the general format. Tarantino has a style. You think Wes Anderson, so distinct. Like, you watch these people's movies and you know who the director is. She has the style. If you watch her movies, you're like, it's her. So it's her, here's sure. something that I loved, and I don't know if you caught this, but I caught this while sure, watching Little Women. Let's see. When the movie, so the movie goes back and forth between the past and the uh, present, and it, the past is always shot brighter, and the present is always shot darker. Oh, I don't think I like uh, picked up on that. It's absolutely, but subconsciously, it's absolutely it's beautiful smart. and so well done. It's so smart that if you don't pick up on and it, it's your subconscious subtle, does. But beautiful. Oh my god, it's amazing. I love, I love that she did that. It's she, just that added effect that really helps. And then portray the, the only part of like the present that is bright is the fine is the ending. Yeah, the ending. It's oh, it's so good. Just even Greta the subtleties are too. on point, and everything else about it, just the frame, mm-hmm. like everything is on point. But that there's just these added little like. I don't want to call them quirks, but added little techniques put in there that just add to it. Oh, I'm going to change so our Twitter good. name to hashtag justice for Greta justice and Saoirse. for Greta, but not the... What's... Never mind. <laughs> okay, so now we're on to... Actor in a leading role. Antonio Banderas for Pain and Glory. Leonardo DiCaprio, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Adam Driver, Marriage Story. Joaquin Phoenix, Joker. Jonathan Price, The Two Popes. This is a strong category. Very strong category. This is a super strong category. Can I say that I am shocked that Antonio Banderas is nominated, and I will never not say his name as Antonio Banderas. Sorry, you can cool it a bit there. Um, I did not see Pain and Glory. I didn't even know it existed until these nominations came out, I won't lie. Did you look into it at all or no? I did look into it because, shameless plug here, guys, Joe's on another entertainment podcast. <laughs> Hi. Uh, I'm on a news. An, a, no, 
it's not adultery, Ava. <laughs> um, it's what a journalist does. They also have to have professional yeah, things. I'm sorry. This podcast is the <laughs> farthest thing away from professional. <laughs> Jesus fuck. Um, <laughs> Jesus, Jesus fuck. That was the point. Uh, All right. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's a news entertainment podcast with me and actually Noah Shepard, who hosted the Ooh. musical in film Thank episode you. with me. We're over there doing that, and we actually covered uh, some of the nominations here. Not as in-depth as we're doing or uh, mm-hmm. as many categories, but we did cover some of them, and we did I'm talk sorry, a little bit about sorry, what's that called, and, and where can people listen to um, it? You can listen to this on Spotify and Apple Music right now. It is called Sheridan Stars. It is created by Sheridan College and our Sheridan Sun, uh, which I originally did the Sheridan Sun podcast for mm. late last year. Uh, they've divided up now into different sections doing different types of podcasts and we were very fortunate enough to be given the entertainment one which Mm -hmm. is really cool it's really awesome for us we have a lot of creative control with it Um, we're actually doing an episode coming out next week which is because of Gwyneth Paltrow's uh, vagina scented goop candle (laughs) and her company we're just looking into the silliest things celebrities have endorsed and what happened to them I think my favorite one so far, the, from what we've well, researched. Well, save it for your other podcast. Let them hear. A little tease here. All right, let's tease. Beyonce got called a hypocrite and, like, called out because she was supporting Pepsi and Michelle Obama's uh, get moving, uh, mm-hmm. like, losing weight thing at the exact same time. Oh. Mm-hmm. So, very, very interesting stuff. But, yeah, so um, tune you know, to that. want to hear more about check that, out. now you know where to yeah, check, check that. Check that out. But, yeah, but so, getting back to I... it, actor in a leading role. Yeah. Three of my favorite actors around today are in this category. Can I tell you who I think should take it and why? Well, I have, I have two choices. Number one is Joaquin, just because he's absolutely fantastic in his role. Kills it, crushes it in every single way. So great. One of the best performances of the year. But Leo's portrayal in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, guys. Like, the more I good. think about Leo Once Upon a Time, the more I just love it. He was absolutely fantastic. Honestly, not he my great, all-time favorite you know? Leo role, but one yeah. of my favorite Leo roles. He's so He's great, great in this. In he but what I... The, the most... The best scene in the movie is Leo's scene when he gets super upset at himself for being drunk on the job and not knowing his lines, and he freaks oh, out himself so in the trailer, good. and it was just an improv Spoiler. scene that he just did. And then he goes into the next take, and he crushes it in He's every great. single way, and... He's fantastic. He's he so adds a lot great. To any movie he's in, but I think that they're more likely to give Leo an Oscar now that he's lost his Oscar virginity. You know what I mean? <laughs> After that long stretch, they're not going to give him an Oscar. Now I have a feeling he's just going to boom, 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 like get them, just stack them up, put them in a closet, keep them on display, and be like, I, I fucking got them. <sighs> so I can see him winning this one, but he's- I think I think Joaquin Phoenix is going to take it. I think so. I think Joaquin is also going to get it, too. It's great. And he's a method actor. He goes all in. Joker has the most nominations, and I really think it's going to clean house. I really do. And then I I did love Adam Driver in in Marriage Story, but again, Mm -hmm. it's kind of a plain character that, just because it's a more uh, grounded in reality type story versus, like, Joker or Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, where there's more whimsical and, I don't know, storytelling things, Marriage Story is, like, real like it's it's painstakingly real it's just it's it's sad how realistic it is really that's the point of the movie that doesn't have that same effect or punch that the other movies have that could be my bias because i'm not a big fan of movies that are like just like super real you know Mm. what i mean i like i like that whimsical dream like element to it so his role was just kind of like a person (laughs) you know what i mean versus like you know being that being an actor in the 60s that's Mm. that powerful and conflicted or being the joker you know there's more they could do with it so sorry adam but you didn't have the same opportunity the other guys had yeah right it's main event time ava right, the big one now let's talk about which one of these films deserves to be here which ones don't and what was good and what was bad it's time to talk about let's, best picture let's go one at a time let's start off All right with ford v ferrari ford versus ferrari ford v ferrari ford not- versus ferrari <laughs> Well, in the thing, it's just Ford V, not VS. And you know, this movie was actually released with a different name in the UK. Really? Yeah. Do, do you have that name um, on you by any chance, If you chance, give Ava? me a second, okay. I will. And but... while you're doing that, I'll explain what I thought. Ford versus Ferrari was it was a good movie. Christian Bale gives a good performance, not the best of his career. Same with Matt Damon, good performance, not the best of his career. But they have great chemistry on sta- on on stage, on in the scenes together. They're great actors. It tells a true story that's actually a really cool story. There are parts of the movie that can probably be cut. There's some things that are better than others. This movie, oh, you want to know what it's called? Yeah. Uh, Le Mans 66. In different 
European territories. I believe in the UK mm-hmm. as well. That, um, that makes sense. Yeah. Because so it, they it is didn't... about the yeah. Le Mans in 1966. So they didn't just translate it over. But I don't know. Actually, I think it's just Ford versus Ferrari for the US and Canada. I don't know why. But I guess that probably worked better with US and Canadian. Because we're dumb and don't know Le Mans in 66. But we know the name Ford and we know the name mm-hmm. Ferrari. Um, I think this movie just kind of fell victim to... The temptation of uh, big Hollywood movies to just go crazy with excess. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Biggest name actors they can get. Biggest stunts they can get. You know, high production value and everything. Adding as many scenes as they can. As much shock value as much. You know what I mean? Like, it's just kind of there. It's a lot all yeah. at once. It's, it's a good movie, but, but it it's also all it's the, just not one of the best of this yeah, year. Yeah, it checks all the boxes to be like a good Oscar movie, but that's exactly it. It doesn't add anything. Mm-hmm. It just kind of... The story is good. It's like interesting. It's cool. It hasn't been done before, sure, but it just follows the formula that all these movies always try and follow. So I don't feel anything special about it. But I did enjoy watching it. I just don't think it can even hold a candle to the other films nominated here. Mm-hmm. The Irishman is next. What do you think about the Irishman? The Irishman was good. It was a good movie. I enjoyed good. it. But you can cut a, a whole bunch of scenes out ha- <laughs> throughout it, and you can cut out the last thirty minutes. Okay. Some people were like, "Oh, it was so great to see him in his like." Like afterwards, mm-hmm. I'm like, no. This is the movie had its focus. This goes beyond that focus, which is fine, but it wasn't necessary. You can easily cut down this three and a half hour movie to two and a half hours, which would make it so but, much more enjoyable. But would that be a Scorsese film? No, but no. I can dream. Also, it's there's like it's a good movie. The performances are great, but there's nothing extra special about it which i feel like you need this year there's so much special things about so many of these movies that the the last three nominated in the category that we'll get to there they all have something special just a special spark the next one we're going to talk about is something special okay wait so for the irishman i although it's long i didn't really have a feeling that it dragged at all until towards the end like you know what i mean it's a long movie but i was captivated for yeah, most of it. I it feel wasn't like until the about... end that I was kind of like, is it almost over? Is this? Because I thought it ended. And then there was like 45 minutes left. I'm like, when we Jesus start getting Christ. into exploring how, like, how Jimmy Hoffa gets killed, I got lost a bit. Mm-hmm. Then after he gets killed and we go into like the investigation, I get brought back in. And then the whole afterwards thing at the old folks home, I was like, why are you still going on? And I watched it the night the Game Awards was on. And I'm like, okay, I want to go watch the Game Awards now. I'm so yeah. bored here. And the Game Awards were a disappointment this year. <laughs> so it was just a night of disappointment from there on out for me. I think it was a strong movie, but it's just, it's an- another movie. Like I said, you know, Scorsese's format has been stolen and reproduced like dozens, hundreds of times. So I'm a little bit over it. To say the least, I don't know if that's blasphemous to diss Scorsese like that, but I am. I'm over his style. I don't need another Scorsese film. I'm satisfied with the ones we have. Mm-hmm. Now, let's skip over these ones. Let's go to let's talk about nineteen seventeen next. Bland plot, bland characters, dialogue is shit. Performances are only good with from the few minute scenes of the big wig actors, but amazing directing, cinematography, nice. and attention to detail. And have you ever played Dishonored by Bethesda Game Studios? No, but I've like I know about it. Yeah, like it's a yeah. fir- it's one of those first it. person games where you have to be like sneaky and like move around and you're moving through mm-hmm. different environments that are usually cities. Um, the beautiful thing about this is that there's an entire scene in 1917 that it, the guy's actually running through this burning down village. It's being burned it's down. Reminiscent of it, right? Yeah, and it, it's very much reminiscent of it, and it feels like you're actually there in this game. But the one thing, my biggest problem with this movie, so there's a scene where they come across a farm in yeah. the movie and they find milk at this farm okay fine mm-hmm. they find milk i don't think it's gonna be anything important at the very most the milk is gonna like make him sick it just quickly shows the milk and him filling up his thing because he emptied out his water thing before fine this milk becomes a plot device later in the movie i think that was them trying to be no a ava bit... this milk becomes a plot device it's fucking bullshit I think when the this happened was in trying the theater i literally back. shouted are you fucking kidding me right now? Yeah. Don't if you are going to sit down in a theater and you see Joe enter, I leave. See the movie at another time. <laughs> Bullshit. Uh, it, it was a little bit stupid. I think it was an it was attempt so stupid. to make it more clever because they. I think they were aware that it was uh, bland this was about and as ingenuine. Clever as Ryan Johnson's writing in Knives Out. <laughs> so they were trying to make it clever, but in that attempt, just made themselves look a little bit stupid. I, I don't think this movie is a front runner here. It's a beautiful movie. It's it's nice to look at. It's very, like, you know, realistic. I've heard, apparently. I I wasn't there in 1917, but... um, So give it props to that, but it's not 
It's not the best film. Not even close. Oh, no. Um, and then Parasite is also nominated for this one, which again, right, international film, huge deal to be nominated. I have not seen it, so I don't want to comment on it. Have you seen it? No, you haven't, right? I haven't seen it. Do you know of it? I know, I know about it. Like, I know what it's about and right. everything, yeah. Do you think it has any real chance of winning, or is it just... I think because it's going to win Best Foreign Language Film, and just because of, I don't think an Academy is ready to give Best Picture... To an international to a, to film. To an international film. They're not. They yeah. honestly aren't. It's not going to happen. Now, this movie could honestly be the best movie of the year, and I just haven't watched it yet. That's 100% you know possible. What? I'm a not denying that's a possibility, and a lot of people, a lot of people love it. it. Oh, that's where you're going for it. I was going to say, yeah. a lot of people haven't watched it, and I think that might be one of the reasons that they also just kind of sweep it under the rug. Maybe it is better than all the other movies, mm-hmm. but it's just didn't have the same budget, didn't have the same audience that the other movies had. And I know the Oscars are in, in in no way about, you know, viewership and who gets the most views or else we'd have freaking blockbusters and they'd all be Marvel movies type of thing. But you, you can't have a movie win that all the people watching the Oscars haven't seen, you know? Mm-hmm. Everyone's gonna, we'll be on Twitter later like, what the hell is this? I thought, you know what I mean? So I don't think it has any real chance of winning this category. If it does, I wouldn't be like, upset i'd be happy for it but i just i i, I cannot see it happening yeah, it's not gonna happen um okay and then the other one here uh there's marriage story is nominated as well i'll let you talk about this one okay marriage story like i was saying it's kind of like it, it's it's drab how realistic it is it's it's, it's it's depressing you know it's about a divorce it's it's realistic and kind of heartbreaking but it's nothing special i think it is great in the way that it portrays it realistically that it probably it hasn't really been done before in film but to me it just felt like another movie you know it didn't feel like anything special it's not something that's going to stick with me it's not something we'll be talking about five years 10 years 15 years down the line you know there's special movies that came out this year that i think will have a lasting cultural impact that we could look back 30 years from now we'll remember these movies and marriage story is not going to be one of them it's a good movie but it's just like generally forgettable and not anything special i liked it i had a good time watching it i don't think i'll rewatch it though mm, you know it's just one of those movies i liked it but i didn't love it i think other people that watched it share how i feel that it had good aspects to it but nothing was great you know the acting was good it wasn't great the directing was good it wasn't great the soundtrack was good it wasn't great cinematography was, was good not great but it just had the power of all the elements working together to really move the viewer that, I mean, I bet if you watch it and you are someone who had to go through divorce or you're the child of a tough divorce or moving places, it would hit a, like a heartstring with you and it'd mean more to your, you, but just, I don't know. It was just a movie. It wasn't mm-hmm. an experience, you know? And then, okay, and now the next four nominated in the category, in my mind at least, this is where the competition this is. is the, this, this is, is the competition. This is actually like my top. These are my top four, four movies of this year. Yeah, my top four of this year as well. Um, let's let's start off with Little Women. Do you want to talk about this one? Oh God, I love. this I know film. you love this film so much. It's it's a beautiful twist on the beloved classic. It's so well done. Every performance is amazing. The shots, like I mentioned, mm-hmm. so well done. The cinematography, out of this world. Costume design, great performances fucking fantastic this movie is just great. beautiful it's in every together. single way captures your heart you guys know i'm a sucker for a coming <laughs> of age story this is a beautiful coming of age story mm. retold still keeping it original and fresh full of laughs heartache just wonder at its soul and it just has such a great message and it's empowering and it's it's great i i it is great. I love this movie so much. It, it was such a so pleasant surprise to me. I'm so happy it's been nominated. I really feel like it's not going to get the recognition it deserves just because there's so many great movies out there. And that's one thing that I also hate is that, you know, like people are going to remember what the best picture winner was for this year, but they're not going to remember so many of these films of this year. And 2019 was such a great year for film. And especially it was a great way to end out the decade for film. And I feel like a lot of films are going to get overshadowed and forgotten from this Mm -hmm. year just because of how strong cinema was this year. And, but honestly, I'm so happy cinema was strong. Like we went into the twenties looking good. Yes. Like usually I'm one as Ava knows to just complain that cinema is not the same. You know, I (laughs) I I want to be back in the eighties. It's not as good good these days i complain about this the constant remakes and reboots and while we did have those this year this was but you know what oh, such an amazing year for film guys i'm so there's so much happy film with being film produced right that among you know the shit sweep of remakes and sequels and mm-hmm. forced prequels and stuff 
that there's a lot of good stuff out there. And let's not forget, Ava, next month is the sequel to All the Boys Have Ever Loved on oh, Netflix. That is coming out. I think we need to Did remember. Did you watch the first one? No, I still haven't. Uh, Why the fuck? No, sorry. Yeah, no, I either. have. I've seen like You've the parts because I, I was it. forced to watch the like the last half of it. Yeah. Hear that? Oh. Joe has watched two All the Boys Have Loved before. Such he watched in his bedroom. He cried. Shit. Um, that okay. ending football scene. Like, who directed that? <laughs> okay, let's not get too far off track. Um, Yeah, I agree with everything you said for Little Women. I the mean, romance is forced. Sorry, that was about to all the boys. You could yeah, continue. Little Women's pretty great. I can't really add to what you said because I agree with what you said. But The chemistry on screen on Little Women. As well as, like I was saying, Greta has a distinct style and it's new. And it's really admirable when a director is able to create a style nowadays that's new. Mm-hmm. And it's not just they're creating a style to create a style. It's like an accident that happens because she wants to convey emotion. She wants to do all these things. She wants to make the characters real, but also feel like characters, too. That she didn't purposely try to create a style. Where you see with some directors that it's like they're trying too hard to be Tarantino, to have a distinct oomph to their film. That it's hidden in all these little subtleties she puts in everything. In the dialogue, in the direction she gives the actors, the framing, the colors, the editing, just everything. And it works together it's so cohesive i love just her style and i love the movie because i love the story and i love the directing and that's like the two big ones for me so i love the movie but it is not my favorite to win this category Mm, no i don't think it's gonna win this category uh fun fact though about this movie did you know that greta gerwig however had all the actresses before they started filming put on a show for each other like they all had to put on like some Mm. sort of like monologue or something to get themselves into character and more comfortable with each other i didn't that's cute Mm -hmm. and i I like that that probably worked and helped out you know with the entire sisterly Mm. bond uh which one do you want to talk about next let's talk about once upon a time let's talk about once upon a time hollywood Uh, i think this one might win i think it might i think it it, it, i think joker's gonna win i think it's 50 50 between joker and this one this movie it's great We've talked about it a lot this episode that it, it's it's a slow burn but it's also action-packed that each scene there's so much going on and people who say it's a slow movie drive me like up the wall like i can't stand that it's not a slow movie every it's scene not. there's so much to digest and to comprehend in your mind that if you think it's a slow movie you're not taking it in you're not paying attention it does it does everything so well it kind of covers the tragedy of like you know aging in hollywood of alcoholism in hollywood of of what happened to Sharon Tate. Like, it's so emotional. And it's also comical and entertaining. It's, it's, it's everything. It's like, it's a, such a sad movie. It's such a happy movie. It's such an exciting movie. It's such a slow movie. It's such a fast movie. It's 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 everything in one movie. It's so good. Not to mention, killer cast. Absolutely stacked. Like, you know what I mean? But it's not like Ford versus Ferrari, which is stacked for the point of being stacked. Is It just has talented actors that have great chemistry together. I 100% agree with you with just everything. It's so a fantastic. Great. It's, it's absolutely amazing. It's everything. It's, and I've already, I think, I've said my piece and I was talking about Leo and Brad. He's mm-hmm. absolutely fantastic in it, too. Everyone in this movie is amazing. <laughs> They're great Even together. the little cameos from Al Pacino, mm-hmm. Kurt Russell, uh, Luke Perry's final performance. Yeah. So well done. It's, yeah, this it's movie's great. fucking fantastic. It's Tarantino. Like, it's not like it would be bad. Yeah. Um, and just the ending scene with the flamethrower. Whoa, no spoilers, but the ending scene I keep talking about as the ending scene in this episode and episodes prior, it's so good. I love that scene. Oh, when it's I, so good. I went to go it's and so see good. this with a friend. I saw this movie like four times in theaters. I've seen it probably twice, I yeah. saw it once. When I went to go see it one at the time, so I was with a friend, and uh, I just told him, I was like, just wait. Near the ending, I was like, just, just wait for it. And he's look, he's watching, and he's watching. I'm like, wait for it. Wait for it. And then, of course, like the big fight happens. He goes, oh, okay. I'm like, no. That's not it. Wait for it. And then we get to the flamethrower scene, and he literally jumped out of his chair in the theater. It was Monty. It's such a holy you know, shit. It was Monty. Monty. Of it, was Monty. it was Monty. <laughs> he, like, jumped up. He was like, oh, my God. He <laughs> freaked holy shit moment. out it's in the crazy. theater. It was Because it's, it's such a great moment. It's so well done. It's so great, but it doesn't feel out of place. Like, it's it not a shock. It it's not doesn't. A it's so... it, this movie where there's, like, really nothing huge like that going <laughs> on, and this ending scene is just holy shit there's besides, so much and it fits so well in the movie besides I the that. amount of feet in this movie it's like the most tarantino <laughs> thing the, uh, wait the, the feet is a very tarantino it's thing it's a very tarantino thing that's like the one thing about tarantino style i could do without like screen Relax junkies feet, actually please. did an honest trailer last week for every tarantino movie ever and they did an entire like foot montage oh. and it made me extremely uncomfortable oh. okay so there's two more movies left in this category let's talk about 
Jojo Rabbit next? Jojo Rabbit. Oh, it's, it's a really so bad time to be a Nazi right now. <laughs> uh, this is my favorite movie of the year. I think one of my, my second favorite. It. Yeah. It's so my good. favorite. I love Taika Waititi. I love him so much. You guys know how much I love him. And this movie, just the more I think about it, it's so great. Everything. It's so funny and it's so lovable. The ending at the scene when, you know, he takes the jacket off of him. I don't want to spoil anything. Sam I Rockwell. Cry. Sam Rockwell is fantastic in this uh, movie. The, the scene with the shoes. I'm giving you guys spoiler-free, like, ways of talking about it. But the scene where you see the shoes. Okay. Oh, Everybody thought it was so sad. I was like, oh, okay, it whatever. So it didn't. That that was my one complaint about this movie is That's, that that scene didn't hit me very that hard. That scene destroyed I me. I thought that scene could have been a lot You're better. Not. That and, was my one complaint with this movie. And, and uh. Jojo Rabbit with his friend. I forget his friend's name. That dynamic. It's so cute. Oh, he's so great. That it's kid. It's so great. That kid is being cast as the lead in the Home Alone remake, by the way. Oh, of course. I, that's the o- oh, that's the only acceptable Home Alone remake cast. He's great. No. I don't even know what his name is. He's fantastic. And, and Jojo Rabbit with the... Oh, what's her name? The girl? Rebel Wilson? No. Oh, no. The girl that's in the, uh, yeah, the attic. The yes. Girl. The girl that's in name, the but... attic. Oh, it's so good. All the characters... Are great. Rebel Wilson's character is great. Rebel as well. Wilson is fucking hilarious. Sam in this movie. Rockwell, She's so great, just with, handing bazookas to children. With uh, Alfie, oh, I forget his name. The one from Game of Thrones, Alfie yeah. Allen. Alfie Allen. Him and Sam Rockwell. It's, it's so great. It's so funny. Everything is just so thought out and funny, this, but it's so deep. It's if a I, deep movie. If I can summarize this, this movie is one of the greatest movies I think of the last decade. And there is a two-minute scene where Nazis just stand in a room and say "Heil Hitler" to each other. I hit there. I hit. Yep. Oh, it's so good. It's it's so enjoyable. It's so new. It's so creative. If if you guys haven't seen it this is. movie, go see it. I'm going to quickly summarize it for you. It's this kid is in the Hitler Youth. His, his, his imaginary friend is Hitler, who is played by Taika Waititi, who is half Jewish, half Polynesian, by the way. Does... That's probably the and best. He's fantastic. That's the best portrayal of Hitler I've ever seen. It it's is so great. I just I love can't... it when he just jumps must... out of the window. I'm gonna try and explain it to you guys. Go watch the movie so you know what I'm talking about. If you don't, it's great. And so this kid has his his imaginary friend is Hitler, um, but his mom is harboring a Jewish girl in their attic, and he's a Hitler youth, and he's super torn when he finds out about it. He's like, oh, she's a monster. She's, oh, it's it's so heartwarming and cute, and that's saying something for a movie set in World War Two, Nazi Germany. Yeah, it's it's bold and it's not afraid to do anything, and with that, there's no controversy with it. This movie is so fresh. It's not offensive. It's not anything. It's It's so so fresh. Original. It's so creative. This was my favorite movie of the year, but I don't think it'll win. It won't win. Sad. Sorry. And it deserves a lot of recognition. It's so So well. I I think it's honestly might be be underneath Schindler's List, my favorite war movie. Yeah, but it's it's so different from Schindler's List. It is very. It's extremely different. (laughs) Would not put them in the same category at all. But and it's it's such my favorite movie. Amazing movie. Honestly, one. This movie would probably be in my top ten of the last decade. Nice, nice, nice. It's so good. Okay, and now there's one more movie we got to talk about. Joker. I would say the clear front runner. The clear front runner, um, and well deserved. Honestly, this movie is so well done. You are disturbed when you should be disturbed. <sighs> You're so laughing good. when you should be laughing. You're on the edge of your seat the entire time. This movie is passionate. It's so well done. Beautifully directed. Amazing performances by everyone in the cast. It's just, yeah. it's, it's breathtaking. This movie. The ending is so powerful, and it so leaves you with powerful. just a question. It it still leaves you wanting more, but. It's now, concluded properly, and that is so hard to do, and Todd Phillips does it so amazing. Joaquin nails it with everything Joaquin's he does. Brilliant. Zazie Beetz is good in the fi- is, she's great in the film, too. Good character. Now, this movie, yeah. it's like a fever dream. It is. It it's really like is. It's like an acid trip gone wrong, but subtly. It's, it, okay, and it has an unreliable narrator, which is so hard to do in film. It is. It's you, very hard to do. After you're done watching this movie... You know, I don't know if any of it actually happened in the canon of the story. Mm-hmm. You know, you don't know what actually happened or what was because the story is being told to you yeah. through Joker's See, perspective. The first you don't know time what's actually happening. The first time I watched it, when like it's there would be like meta. all these like people like claiming things and like lies, I'm like, damn, this guy's had like a rough thing at life. But then when I watched it a second time, I was like, okay, what's in his head? Are the people on the phone saying what? Like when he's on the mm-hmm. phone with his boss and he's saying he said he tried to sell you a gun. So did the guy actually give him the gun? Or did, did he, he try to buy the gun off the guy? Like, yeah. what actually happened? Yeah, it'd be like 
spoiler free but then that moment when you find out that there is one thing the joker you've been shown the entire movie and you show that it was made up the entire time yeah. and that's just like hits you and you're like oh my god yeah no this was absolute genius and of course the when he's on the marie show at the end mm-hmm. that's i think the best although jojo rabbit is my favorite movie that's my favorite movie scene of the past year of the past few years love that scene it's so good when he's like you want to hear a joke Marie? <laughs> it's so it's so good it's enjoyable it's fresh it's serious and dark it had controversy around it if the controversy was justified or not who knows who cares it was it was good like i don't even know how to put it into words so i would love for jojo rabbit to win but i can't deny joker is going to win not only because it's a great movie but the cultural impact it had that this is a movie that is both a fan favorite everyone went to see it and it's just phenomenal in all aspects mm-hmm. of the c- critical, you know, appreciation. Actually, it got review bummed a bit on Rotten Tomatoes. Not the well, strongest Rotten Tomatoes. Rotten story. Tomatoes is no one really pays attention to Rotten Tomatoes. Like they've lost their reputation a bit, mm-hmm. but most critics can agree that it's a phen- phenomenal movie. Mm-hmm. In the end, it ended up with a sixty-nine percent on Rotten Tomatoes. I still think that's a little low. It deserves to be higher. Would you say 60%? 69. Oh, I know. That's that's harsh. Yeah, it is this movie was Which is why I'm hoping it wins Best Picture as a fuck you to all those critics. So, yeah, I mean, I think most critics liked it, though. Yeah. For the most part, I mean, it well, got yeah, nominated. That 69% is an average of how many critics rated it fresh and how many rated it rotten. So there were 537 critics that reviewed the movie. 69% of them said it was fresh. Mm. It's, yeah, it's a little iffy. Okay, so just to recap all the movies that are nominated for Best Picture. Yes. So uh, I-, I would say Joker has the biggest chance of winning. I would love for Jojo Rabbit to win. We also have Ford versus Ferrari. I say that's a write-off. There's no way that one will win. Same with The Irishman. I would say 50-50 if it's taken seriously in the category. Mm-hmm. I-, I wouldn't expect it to win, but if it did, I'd be like, oh. I wouldn't be surprised, and I wouldn't be excited. I wouldn't be disappointed. I'd be like, yeah, okay, that, that sounds right, you know? Um, we have Little Women, which I consider a strong contender, but I can't really see it winning. Yeah, it's it'd be huge it, for it Greta Gerwig so to win. So much more. more I think it's, she's just underappreciated. You know, I can't see Marriage Story winning. I, I love the movie, but if it won, I'd be genuinely surprised. Nineteen Seventeen, right off, it's not winning. Yeah, I I, I just hope it doesn't win because it, it's not the best picture. I think Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. What do you think? It. I think it, it, it has, a has a chance if a Joker's not gonna win. Yeah, I'd say that too, yeah. but I think just because it's Tarantino, it has a chance. But then again, that might kind of put it off a bit because it's not new, per se, the way the Joker is. And then, of course, we have Parasite, that international film that neither of us have seen. But it's an accomplishment for an international film to be nominated in this category. But it definitely unlikely that they're going to give it Best Picture. It's really unlikely. Yeah. I'd be very surprised, but in a good way, you know? All right. So, yeah, that about wraps it up. Yeah, uh, no yeah. host for these Oscars, but good It's going to be an interesting one. Now, if you'll remember, after the Oscars last year, we also had a follow-up episode called Why the 91st Academy Awards Didn't Feel That Special. So you can bet that we're going to have a 92nd Academy Awards little review episode where we'll break down the winners, the upsets, what happened during the night, and were they a good show this year? Did they Espe- do better with no host? Did they learn from their mistakes? Especially following up Ricky Gervais's Golden Globe show. <laughs> They should just have Ricky Gervais do it. Call him up. <laughs> they should. But we will definitely be back for that. But first, uh, the date that this is arriving to you is Monday, January 20th, mm-hmm. 2020. You'll be getting this episode next Friday. Be on the lookout. There will be another new episode of 21st oh Century Cinema. Oh, my God. Cinema. Two in one week? No, next. Next. Oh, like next two, Friday. One each week? Yeah, one, one each week. Back to back weeks. We're trying to catch up here because we were up. supposed Sorry, to be guys. back at the beginning of the month, but we ran into some issues doing that. The next episode will be on what is believed to be the best episode. The best episodes. Jesus. The best movies the best of movies 2019. 2019. And the worst movies. Uh, Ava, you won't be there for that. I sadly. won't be there. You guys are going to recap all that happened yeah. in 2019. And you know what? I didn't watch as many movies as I, as I watched in 2018, 2017. So you're bringing mm-hmm. along a good friend who probably knows more than I do. Yes, Ava has some other commitments, so she can't be there. I'm but sorry. Chasm Shake, aka Zero Network, uh, will be. Yes, he'll be on the show. We will be talking about that. Uh, actually, at the recording of this, I'm going over there tomorrow. <laughs> we're we're doing it tomorrow. Mm, but don't yes, expose. yep. So we're going to be talking about the best and the worst. Then we'll be back right after the Oscars. We'll be having our little Oscar review show. 
which will be very exciting. We have a few and other then, things planned as well. Mm-hmm, we have some other things planned. We don't really know the order that they're coming in after that, but Ava is working on an episode on f- Canadian film to educate me because she says I need to be educated more A lot of people it. think that Canadian film is non-existent. It really isn't. It's there. It's well, it's there. I'm, we'll talk about it. I hope you, you can know? teach me more. As a Canadian, you um, learn. There is also the request out there for Ava to do that score episode she promised back in September. So did maybe, I promise maybe, it? You did. Oh. So maybe we'll... We'll I'll get her it. to do that. Um, do that. We have an episode on adaptations from book to movie that we're going to be doing. Adaption? Yeah, adapt- adaptation, adaption. I think they're interchangeable. I'm not sure, but yeah, yeah keep going. And, of course, the uh, fabled Noah versus Noah that we've been talking about. It's going, it's actually going to happen, It's going to happen in March, guys. We're going to bring both Noah, Noah Shepard and Noah Schaefer. We are hoping to do it in Ooh, February. They're both Noah S, too. Yeah. Noah uh, <laughs> We were going to do it in February, but here in Canada, we have this holiday called Family Day. And it really interfered with everyone's reading weeks, so we just weren't able to arrange it for then. But we're going to be bringing it out in March. Reading week is Canadian too, I think. Yeah, it's reading week. It's like Canadian. your it's like your spring break, I guess, in America. Because yeah, actually, but it's for studying. Yeah, spring break is I think... also shout out. We have very loyal American listeners from oh. New Hampshire and California. We have like five extremely loyal. Uh, when I look at the analytics, we have five, five extremely loyal. Everyone else is Canadian or new zealand we have new zealand listeners because i talk Shout about taiko waititi yeah but yeah. we have new Ze- maybe it's taiko waititi it's him actually yeah. he just listens um, to it to feel good about himself but yeah but we have uh like two loyal new zealand listeners and five you loyal- just count out the numbers because okay, these sorry. listeners are going to be sitting here listening and they're like damn they know i listen yeah that's like kinda you crazy. guys are like super loyal you're like our international listeners we're so happy we've so had proud. like a few here and there from other places around the world but these are like our main people who come back every, every episode, episode. And the, and the California people have been around since, like, the beginning. Like, I don't know who you are, California. but I love you, whoever you are in California, it's constantly listening to this podcast and just sticking with us through this entire journey. And, of course, all of yeah. our Canadian and brothers and if you guys want to reach friends. out to us, say anything. Even just be yeah. like, hey, guys, that's me, and put a smiley face. Or if you want us to do a specific episode, if you want us to talk about something, if you really disagree with mm-hmm. what I said or what Joe said, which is probably more likely for you to disagree with, I'm more agreeable. Anyways... Our Instagram DMs are always open. You can message us on Twitter, on anything. Like, honestly, reach out to us. We will get back to you. We'll have a conversation with you. We'll talk about whatever. You know what I mean? Like, Mm -hmm. please don't hesitate to reach out to us. Yeah, so please, uh, and also give us a follow if you're not following us already. That's right, on Uh Instagram. Don't be like Emma Stone. Get on the gram. Give us a follow. Emma Stone? She's not on Instagram. (laughs) Why'd you bring up Emma Stone? Because she's not on Instagram? Yeah, that and because I just actually watched last night the Billy on the Street episode with Emma Stone and they oh. were trying to get her to join Instagram. So that's that's wow. fresh in my brain. Okay, but if you guys do want to follow us on Instagram, hey, it is 21st Century Cinema. All spelt out, no numbers or anything. Mm-hmm. Um, we're also on Twitter at TFCC Podcast, leading the hashtag right now that's going to sweep the nation and be trending of justice for Sersha and Greta. <laughs> it's coming. And we are also on Patreon patreon.com slash tfcc you're still not gonna check it out you're still not gonna care you know what all those all those things we just listed because you might have forgotten them you didn't write them down even though they're pretty simple it's in the description of the episode it is and if you just absolutely love listening to ava talk about movies like i do every two weeks she's also on instagram at ava curvello and you know what (laughs) if you love joe listen to him talk about movies you wish you could see his face on his instagram he's an instagram too and it's at the underscore only underscore no no what? you got it wrong it's yeah. at the one and only jdv oh, with underscores in between oh, so at the underscore one underscore and underscore one and <laughs> only underscore jdv underscore too complicated and an underscore at the end well it's if it's too complicated well. for you yeah it's in the description Convenient. of the episode which i love how ava you can you act like you take all their credit for that i write everything for this it's copy and pasting social media links relax i still do it all uh okay well yeah that's a breakdown mm-hmm. of what's to come how yeah to we're excited for us. the new year um this is technically the premiere episode of season two this is season two of this is season two cinema. we made oh it guys Lord, we, we got renewed we didn't get canceled hell yeah yeah um, um you know and keep keep an eye out on our instagram by the way because we're always sending out uh asking you guys questions because we'd love to do q a's yes, because... and we've got polls on there that we love polls, to do yes sometimes i'll post a little quiz on there you know yep. just so i feel more superior than i know stuff or you guys can challenge us, you know. Yeah, so just don't hesitate to reach out to us on any of our social media platforms. Yeah. Give us a follow. And also, like. follow us a little more on Twitter. Give me inspiration to use the Twitter more, guys. I really got to use it more. Twitter's barren. The Instagram yeah. is as well. We're 
If you guys reach out to us on it, maybe we'll our Instagram it. story game though is fire. Yeah, Instagram Inst- story game. Yeah. But once again, thank you so much for listening to 21st Century yeah, Cinema. Have a Welcome good one, guys. to our second year. Hopefully, of many year more two. to come. And or uh, maybe Ava will just drop out halfway through this year. We have no idea. Me, what's maybe She's you'll drop out. So unpredictable. This year. No. Uh, I kind of no. am unpredictable. No. This is our this is our little baby, and it's grown so big. I'm so proud of it. I know. And we have we can do so much more. So thank you once again for thank listening. Thank you so much. And we will see you in the next episode. Goodbye.